Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at how to create a reverse shell with Netcat or how to initialize one at least. Alright, so you might be a little bit confused and you might be wondering well, what exactly is a reverse shell. Well, a reverse shell, to be quite frank, is probably one of the most important things that you need to know how to do as or how to initialize as a penetration tester. And essentially what it is, is connecting to a remote computer and redirecting the input and output of the of the shell on that computer so that it can be remote uh, it can be accessed remotely what do i mean by this so let's say for example as i'll show you in a few seconds let's say i wanted to access my kali terminal from my windows command prompt how would i go about doing this and this is where netcat really shows its brilliance when it comes down to transferring data between client and server so in this case or in this scenario i want to access uh, the, the, my Kali Linux terminal or my Kali Linux sy system from my Windows operating system. And that's where we use a reverse shell. So a reverse shell is simply redirecting the input and output that is going to be, yeah, that is going to be sent, uh, or inputted here and is going to redirect it to the Windows command prompt so that I can then, uh, re remotely access the, uh, the Kali terminal. All right. So to do this, uh, we need to understand a few things. Uh, the reverse shell or the concept of a reverse shell is very simple. The, uh, we have the client and the server like always and the outbound connection is from the client to the server. So essentially what's going to happen is that the Windows operating system is going to be the server and the Kali operating system is going to be the client. And you might be a little bit confused and that's because we want the outbound connection. We want Kali to have an outbound connection rather than, uh, rather than windows being the client and kali being, being the um the server uh for the purpose of uh of the firewall i'll explain in a few seconds we want essentially uh the kali uh, op operating system to connect to the windows operating system so again windows will be the server and kali will be the client so you might be saying well why is this happening why are we using an outbound connection from the target system why are we you know using an outbound connection well that's because when it comes down to firewalls, we cannot have a connection, an inbound connection from an operating system requesting, you know, to connect to an essential system service like the terminal. It's going to alert the firewall and the connection will be blocked, as you probably would have guessed. So it's always better to have the shell going uh, outbound and the data being redirected to the server. And again, that is not... Uh, you know, show up or, or come up as suspicious traffic because all the traffic is outbound. All right. And that's the beauty of a reverse shell. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set up the server on Windows. So it's really very simple. And before we actually do that, let me just explain what we'll be using. So I'm just going to op open up the help menu in the Kali OS. All right. So we are going to be using the E command. We are going to be using the E command here and I'll explain what it is. The E command is used to execute uh, the given command. In this case, we need to specify the terminal or the bash. As you can see, you have your bin uh, shell or your bin bash. I'll be using the bin bash uh, just to show you uh, that it does indeed work. And uh, we'll be looking at that in right in a second. So I'll show you the syntax. So setting up the server is very, very simple. I'm just going to open up my command prompt once more. And I'm going to type in NC and NVLP. We're setting up the server just as you would. And I'm going to set the port as simply port 1234. Okay, and once I hit enter, uh, this is now going to listen for connections on that. And as you can see, it's going to tell you that. So listening on any uh, 1234 and it's going to, uh, this is going to be on uh, this, uh, on the Windows uh, local IP. All right. So again, to find out your local IP, if you are following my example, you can simply type in IP config and look for your, uh, your network adapter. In my case, it is the ethernet adapter and, uh, my local IP is 192.168.1.102. All right. So now that I know that I can now go to the client side, which is Kali. And, uh, what I want to do now is I want to now connect to the server, but th in this case, I want to bind a shell, a reverse shell. Uh, but of course, this is outbound, so uh, there will be a difference. And in this case, this uh, the client is the one that is going to be executing uh, is going to be executing the uh, the bash or the shell. So, netcat and nv. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know what that syntax is. We're now connecting to the server, so 192.168.1.102. Uh, and uh, we now need to specify the port, port 1234, and we need to say we are executing. 
and we specify what we want to execute. In this case, we want a terminal instance or a shell instance on the Windows command prompt. So I'm going to type in bin bash and I'm going to hit enter and it's going to connect to the server right over here. And now if we finally go back to the Windows uh, command prompt, you can see that it's going to connect and it's not going to give you any more information. But watch this. This is the magical bit. If I type in ls, you can see that it displays the data that is on my Kali operating system. That means that we have a terminal session uh, that uh, on our Windows command prompt. Essentially, what's what's happened here is we have been able to connect remotely to the Kali OS and we are able to uh, operate it from the command prompt. So, for example, I can run the script data dot sh and I hit enter and as you can see it's going to execute the script that we had created in the previous videos so this was sent over netcat and I can as also display the data uh, the contents of the data dot sh file so data dot sh and I'm going to hit enter and as you can see it's going to display the script that we created in the previous video and you can also run Linux commands right over here so I can change my directory and if I list the files in there I'm now in my uh, in my home directory so again I can go a step back and go you know into the uh, the file system here and again i can change my directory into the root directory list the file same thing and let's go back to the desktop and uh, we now have a reverse shell and we're able to remotely uh, control the kali operating system through the shell all right pretty awesome right um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in this video, uh, really how to set up a reverse shell. And of course, you can do this in both instances. If you wanted the Windows command prompt on your Kali uh, terminal, you can do that as well. You simply need to reverse the process. It's as simple as that. All right. So that's going to be it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.